Welcome to the office. Benjamin. Yeah. Welcome to the office. Thank you. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm good. How can I help you? Oh, uh, a doctor a couple years ago told me I had a deviated septum. Okay. And uh, even before that, I wasn't able to like breathe. I can only breathe through like one nostril at a time. Um, it's very rare for like both of them to be open. And does it switch from one it side does. to the other? Yeah. Okay. I think yes. Like even today, like it's on the. Le I think it depends on which side I sleep or something. Yeah. Okay. I don't really know how. And it's been like that for how long? A couple of years. I don't. Know, maybe five. Did something happen? I don't think so. I don't think Any injury? Any slips or falls? Dead when he was a kid? I'm gonna. I'm gonna he see it. He broke which femur? Uh, left. Left side? Yeah. Okay. So you broke the femur yeah. when you were two. Yeah. Everything's healed up now, of yeah. course. You're in high school. Mm -hmm. And you play any sports? I don't right now. What did you play? Uh, I was playing baseball for a while. Okay. I was taking tennis for a little bit, too. Okay. Um, no, no. And you don't play now? Why? Um, I was just trying to focus more on academics. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Not because of the nose. No, no, no. Not because of breathing or no. anything. But it's getting to a point where now you need care. Or yeah. you need to figure out what to do. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, all right. So it switches from one nostril to the other. Yeah. Number one. Yeah. Uh, is it dominant on one side versus the other? Like, can you breathe better out of one side versus I the other? I usually can breathe out of my left better. But I think sometimes, sometimes I can't breathe out of my left at all. But I think most of the time I can. Okay. Do you remember any other injuries, any other slips, falls, anything on your head, playing sports? Uh, I don't know. I have two brothers, so I don't know. We, uh, I don't, older, I'm assuming? Uh, one older, one younger. We're okay. all in like the same age range, like pretty close. Okay. So I don't know. I, I play pretty rough with them. I don't yeah. know. Specifically, I... What about jaw? Uh, jaw is off too, I saw. Yeah. I just, I had like a terrible like jaw, like growing up. Um, and then I went to like an orthodontist. It was like, I had an underbite. It was like really bad. Mm -hmm. um, and then I just finished my uh, process. Um, so I just have a retainer now. Okay. But does the jaw bother you right now? Uh, I haven't noticed. No that. pain, no clicking no. or any of that? No. Okay. All right. What else? Anything else? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. All right. So this is a different, a unique uh, visit for me. Oh, yeah? Yeah, and the reason why is um, you guys came, but I don't think you guys watched the videos of what, of what I actually do here. No. And the deviated septum brought you in. But I don't just look at a deviated septum, I look at the whole person, okay? And we do the full spine x-ray, and in the full spine x-ray we get everything from the foundation all the way to the septum, the jaw, everything. <laughs> And whatever's out, I explain it, we examine you, and then we'll figure out if we're going to do anything else. Sure. Uh, when we're looking at breathing issues and septum, there's two different things going on. Number one, there's the true deviated septum, yes. But then there's also things, and I have a lot of cases, a lot of cases, that there's a septum issue that may be higher up inside. That's not my case. Mm. My case is if it's here. But how do we help that? It's, I usually find pressure in the upper cervicals. And the nerves controlling actually help through the cranial nerves, adjustments in upper cervical to help the person breathe. And then we've had many, many cases of people that would breathe better. They're breathing through both nostrils, but there's still a deviation, which then becomes a cosmetic thing. Mm. So if it's a cosmetic thing, that's not my case. Mm. I just want to be clear mm -hmm. about that. My job is to help you breathe. Mm -hmm. Okay, breathe better, sorry, mm -hmm. and figure out the imbalances. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, shall we get started? Yeah. Anything else you want to add? Uh, I don't know. I okay. Don't think so. All right, no worries. Maybe something will come along the way. All right, come on over here. Have a seat. Benjamin, this is you. This is, a, this is your 24-story building. This is a picture in time. 24 bones in the spine that move. This is the foundation of your 24-story building. In order to have a stable building, we need a level base and foundation. This is your side profile. Side profile, we're looking at curves, we're looking at posture, and we're looking at discs. Now, let's go over this x-ray first. So let's talk about the foundation, okay? And this is kind of important. When we're looking at this, 
in terms of the foundation, we have a few things going on here. You can see there's a little bit of an imbalance going on in your, in your pelvis. Your, we have a little bit of rotation in the sacrum. It's dropped three millimeters on the left. So I know we've had some sort of tailbone injury at some point. We also have a lowered leg or a shorter leg on the left with the rotated pelvis, and I want to explain this. Now, in this work, what Dr. Gonstead found in this particular methodology, um, anything under seven millimeter MD, which is the measured difference, adjustments will hold. You're at eight millimeters. If I work on your pelvis or you get your pelvis worked on that way, it actually makes more imbalance. Mm. So the answer is not in your pelvis. Sure. The answer is in your tailbone because three millimeters of this is coming from the drop tailbone. And I'll explain more on the other x-ray when we get to it. And then from that, we're going to follow it up, okay? From that, we can see it's lower creating a little bit of a tilt to that left side, okay? It comes up, goes straight, and then we have a little bit of a kink going on in the, in the mid-upper back. And why that's important, because it relates to the upper cervical, it relates to your TMJ, it relates to your breathing, and I'm gonna explain why. So the imbalance going on from here, you can see creates this curvature, mm. right? Yeah. But then what does it do here? It compensates and it goes this way, and then what does it do? It compensates and goes that way. Mm. So it kind of creates a slight S shape. I see. Does that make sense, what mm -hmm. I'm showing you? Yeah. So, and the reason I'm pointing that out is if I'm getting pressure up here, none of that is going to hold unless I work on the other stuff. And that's part of the visit anyway. Okay? Now, let's get to the upper cervical. Let's get to the TMJ. And the reason I asked you about the TMJ, I can see there is a deviation of the TMJ. But if there's no pain or clicking, I don't need to touch it. Okay? Two, two cases or two things, you know, that, to share information with people doing the work. The two things you don't touch an asymptomatic TMJ or asymptomatic knee, no matter how bad it looks on the x-ray. So that's not something we need to deal with. Now, let's look at the septum and let's look at your airways. Okay? So this is the right side, Benjamin. This is the left. You said the left or the right because the right looks more congested right now. I can't breathe through the right. I can breathe through the left. Correct. Yeah. So when you see, you see, that, you see that darker line there? Yeah. That's air. That's the airway. I see. You can see the right side? Yeah. It's a lot smaller, yes? Yeah. Okay. So when we're looking at it, we can see there is that deviation causing a little bit of a pinch on that side, on the mm -hmm. right side. So the idea is we're going to see what we can do to open it up when I do the exam. Okay. Okay, so we can see the difference between left and right. Dad, do you see that? Okay. Now, <clears throat> let's go back to the upper cervical and let's explain it. So when I'm looking at the upper cervical, I see more, this is the atlas plane line, this is C2, and this is C3. So what I'm look these lines should be parallel when we're looking at the disc plane lines. We know the atlas is up on that right side and that could be contributing to it. But C2 is also up and it's parallel, right? Mm. So adjusting one over the other, it depends on what we find here, but I'm I'm suspecting there is going to be something here between C1 and C2. C3 you can see if I bring this line up, C2 is where the tilt starts. So C2, the second cervical, which is the big bump that comes off the skull, mm. that's your C2. Okay. And that's something I'm assuming, I am pretty sure we're going to find something there. Okay. okay. Now, that's the upper cervical. In terms of the foundation, we have the rotated sacrum. Let me explain this. So this is your left pelvis or left SI joint. Mm. The left sacrum goes back three millimeters, down three. The pelvis goes down one and in three. So the overall effect is your body favors to the left side. So dad, when you walk with him, I'm assuming you're on his right side. So he's on your left side. Because if you're on this side and he keeps going that way, I think you bump a little bit. Mm. Something, something to pay attention to, mm. okay? 
So the idea is we want to see what we can do to get this up and over and get this up at least two millimeters for you. Okay. That's really the key. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Any questions on this x-ray? Okay. Let's go over this one. Now, when we're looking at the side profile, first thing is the posture. When we're looking at the posture, we're going to run a posture line straight up. Now, this posture line should go through the base of the sh neck or the shoulders and the ear. And what we can see, he has a little bit of a sway back going on. And the sway back, and I'll explain the consequence of it. The sway back, it's like this. So the upper part of your building is behind the foundation of the building. Mm. So these muscles and ligaments have to work a little bit harder to keep you upright. So I'm assuming when you're sitting long studying mm. or standing long, you start to get a little bit tight across the top sure. here. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. And that's related to the posture. Okay. Now I'm going to show you where that part is coming from. And that stuff, there's going to be things you're going to need to work on in terms of the posture. It's very important. Okay. Let's go now to the foundation. And let's look at the tailbone. Now, <clears throat> you're still young enough in the tailbone. We have five segments of the sacrum that ossify or mature around the age of 32. Okay. You're still young enough, but these, they do have rent discs in there. They can swell and cause pressure. And what I see is actually starting at S5 right here. Okay, these should all be parallel. This is open in the back also, S2. S1 may be tender. It looks okay overall, but maybe a tiny bit of swelling there. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be working on probably on your tailbone first as we go through today's visit, okay? The discs are good. Five is good, four is good, three, two, one. I want you to see something though. What starts to happen here? This one is a little bit thinner than the rest of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Yeah. It's because of that sway back and your weight distribution is happening. Bring your legs here, yeah. sit over here, sit forward. Your weight distribution is here. So the, you feel this mm. in there? Yeah. In this area. So there's more weight being put on that particular disc. Five, four, three, two, one, 12, 11. You said you played baseball? Yeah. Lefty, righty? Uh, righty. You swing right? Yeah. Uh, I swing. I'm a righty, so I swing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm just curious. Yeah, yeah. So this is what I see here. Now, in terms of what's causing the posture, we look here. This is fine. It starts here, starts here. I'm pretty sure it's in the foundation. But you can see that this tilts back, this tilts back, this tilts back. This one is okay. Mm -hmm. So starting at four tilts back, three goes with it, two goes with it, one goes with it, 12 goes with it. 11 goes with it, and 10, 9, this is where it starts to level off the disc. Mm. So all of this is compensation for what's happening in the foundation. Mm. Make sense, Dad? Okay. These discs are all good. These discs are all good. Now, the overall neck discs are good. You crack your neck? Yeah. You, you're a self-cracker, right? Oh, uh, yeah, for sure. Why? Uh, it gets, like, tight, like, really tight sometimes. Remember what I just told you about yeah, all this? Yeah. It's coming from here. Oh, really? Yes. And the reason I say that is this. I can see there's this one is slightly off in the base, but then you're starting to get a little reversal there, but then you straighten out again. Mm -hmm. There's a disconnect. We call it, <clears throat> if we put a line through the back of the, of the body of there, let's move that up. That's the back of two, three. That's at the back of four and the back of five, let's actually use a different way. So this is the back of that one, and let's turn this one around. So there's a disconnect in the ligament there. We call it a disruption of George's line. These, the line should be contiguous. You see how that, those two line up? And even if I put it there, and bring it up, they still line up. Uh -huh. that, that one is off. Yeah. That's because of the ligament, because you pop your neck too much. Oh. Okay? Okay. That's why I asked that. Sure. All right. I'll give you homework of what you can do for that. Okay. All right? You with me so far? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the take-home message here is we have the foundation, and as I said, the septum brought you in, and we'll deal with the breathing and the septum, but I am going to be working on your foundation. 
uh, <clears throat> you know, people coming in and we get a lot of uh, emails and, and phone calls. Uh, I just want to get my septum adjustment, mm -hmm. right? And we get that a lot. And that's not what we do here. You know, we look at the whole body, the whole person. And I've had many cases where, you know, anything can cause anything. I can do an adjustment in the mid-back and their breathing gets better. Mm. So it does, I don't know until I actually examine you. Okay? Make sense? Yeah. You ready to get started? Yeah. All right, let's do it. So what we're going to do next, I'm going to put you on the exam chair. Okay. And what I do first is I run a meter on the back. Okay. This is a mini thermography unit. And what it does, it's measuring heat right now from my finger. Mm -hmm. When there's pressure on the nerve due to inflammation, it's picking up the heat from that. Okay. So that's what we're going to look for first. This tells me where to focus the exam. Okay. After I do that, then we're going to do static palpation, a little bit of motion to figure out what joint we're going to work on. Mm -hmm. And then we'll check the extremity, we'll check the nose. Okay. Okay? You got it. Come over here and have a seat. So first thing we're going to do, let's go ahead and scope you, starting at the base of the neck. Head down just a little bit, please, Benjamin. There you go. Where are you guys coming from? Uh, like... Uh, Inland Empire Inland somewhere? Inland Empire, yeah, around oh, that area. Right on. Starting at the base, and as we go up, it's on the left side. Come back a little bit. There you go. And we're getting about 10 points up top, upper cervical, left side. T6, left side. It's about eight, nine points. Sit up straight for me, sir. There you go. You can see the sway back. If I put my hand here, and I put my hand here. Are you sitting up straight? Yeah. So you can see the difference if you come from the side here. And this is what we want to get him moving more forward. Okay. And you were, you were a righty. What position did you play in baseball? Uh, I was like shortstop for a while. I usually played outfield. All right on. Left, right? Uh, left. All right. All right, and there it is as we get down. It's down low at that S5 like I talked about on the x-ray. It's about 10 points at S5. S5 around T6, T7, and up top around C1, C2, maybe even the occiput. Head down, please. We're going to do what's called static palpation now running my fingers down the spine, looking for the swelling edema point tenderness. And we can see as we get right, all good, brother. Right there, it starts to swell. You start to see that little pool. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight more tender, seven more tender. Seven. How about six? Uh, six is also a little tender, mm. but seven is more? Yeah, seven is more. Okay, eight, nine, ten. Let's continue. Now, here's the interesting part here. I want you to focus over here and see. So we can see the spine. We can see it here, but then it kind of disappears here because this is, this is related to the posture. So put a little curve in your back. So even with the curve, I don't see the spine. Mm. I see more swelling and inflammation. Back towards me, please. Yeah. That's five, tender, no, not, not too not. bad. Yeah. That's one, that's two, that's three, that's four, this is five. On the right and on the left. You feel that one there? Yeah, yeah. That's five. That's five, T7, and let's check the neck. Stay there, please. Head down. Seven, six, five, four, three. That's two. Tender on the left, tender on the right. More tender on the left, yeah, more, more tender. tender on the right. Take a left. Okay, bear with me and let me have it. Head down. Two. 
right there. Okay. Now, let me just bring this down a little bit. Okay. Look up for me. Bending to the right, let me do the work. I'm just checking the upper cervical. Bend to the right, bend to the left. Left side bends better than the right. Agreed? Yeah. Left, right. Now, head down. Let's check a little bit deeper up the top. That's left occiput, that's right occiput. Which one is more tender to you? Left. Now I'm going to do two things. We're going to just turn the head. I'm not adjusting anything, just checking. Turn right. That motion is good. Head down. We're isolating the upper cervical. Turn left. Turn right. Compensates a little bit there. Now, <clears throat> let's nod the head, which is occiput. Let me do the work. We're going to do nodding, okay? Right side. Left side, left, right. Which one feels tighter to you? This one actually moves better. The right one doesn't move as well. Do you feel that? Yeah. Left and right. Okay, shoulders back a little bit. Let's try that again. Relax the head, head down please. Now let me do it. I'm just going to nod but like this with you, okay? Mm -hmm. Let me do the work. Let me do it. Relax the head, please. There you go. Left. You feel that right there? Mm -hmm. Now, this is more tender on the left or this is more tender on the right? I think the left. Okay. So we got to go with what we find. Stand up for me, please. Stand over here. He's going to walk this way, back and forth. And we're going to watch your posture and your walk, okay? Okay. So you're going to walk to the, towards the outlet and back. You're going to do that about three times. And I'm just getting an overall impression of your walk. Okay? Don't think too much about it, dude. Don't think too much about it. Just walk. Okay. <clears throat> Keep going. Okay, so you can see he shifts when he walks. He shifts side to side, and it's more in the turnaround. You can see that it shifts side to side when he walks. When you walk, you should be going through the pelvis like this. Mm. You do a little bit more shifting mm. this way, and you see it more in the middle of his back where that T11 is. Okay, walk again, please. Okay, now, Let's check, have a seat over here. I'm bringing the back down. I'm gonna put my gloves on so we can check your nose. Sit up straight. Yeah. He's like, when's he gonna check my nose, dude? I came for my nose. I get it, dude. You get what I'm doing? Yeah. Yeah, we gotta go through that process. <clears throat> okay. Actually, let's go on your back here. I can test it better over here. Let's go okay. on your back. So this is the septum. This is the bone. Mm. That's not my job, okay? We're going to the septum there. When I go from left to right, not too bad. When I go right to left, tender, yes? And that one's a little bit more stuck when I do that. Right now, go ahead and breathe through your left nostril and out. Breathe through your right nostril. I won't go more than that. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Let's get started. Game plan time. Have a seat over here. And let's figure out the game plan for today. Dad, you understand everything I went over? Yes, sir. So the nose brought him, we'll deal with it today. There's upper cervical, but a lot of this is going back to the foundation, straight up. Okay. You didn't watch the video, that's why you didn't know what to expect. <laughs> right? Yeah. You didn't know what to expect. 
Um, I do this with everybody. It's doing what's right for, for the patient, sure. okay? It's not just treating one thing. So, oh, my, my knee hurts, deal with my knee. Doesn't matter what they come in with, I check everything for them, okay? All right. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start on S5. We're gonna do it right side down. We wanna bring that left side up. That's gonna, then we're gonna do T7. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're gonna do that as a PRS. And then we're gonna do the, I'm actually gonna do the right atlas, left occiput. And then we'll do the nose at the end. Okay. Okay? Now, you've seen adjustments done before? Uh, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna have you on the side. I'm sure. gonna roll, relax your head. Okay. I'm gonna roll you towards me, okay? I'm not gonna drop you. Okay. If I drop you, I send you to Hawaii, okay? All expenses <laughs> paid on me. Okay. Whole family, all, all the three brothers. Don't try to fall, dude. <laughs> All right. Okay. I'll be on the underwear on the outside. Okay. okay. Dad, we good? Yep. Relax there. Now, I'm going to roll you towards me. Let me do the work. Let me do it. Good. That's the home run. Come on up, please. Push yourself up. Swing your legs down. Okay. Let's walk once. Walk once. As you're actually twice. As you're walking, tell me if anything is different right now in your walk. Yeah, I think I feel more balanced. Like I'm not leaning on this side more. Mm -hmm. Face down over here, please. Alrighty. Let's do T7. Hands forward, please. There you go. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Relax the shoulders. That's the home run, baby. Good. Gotcha. I'm going to bring you up now. Wait for it. Okay. Walk it off again one time. Come over in the chair, please. Right there. Okay, just relax nicely. Hands on your lap. There you go. So we're going to do right atlas. We're going to do left occiput. Okay. Right side. Let that right ear down. Almost. Down. There you go. You do crack yourself. Self crackers, I'm gonna give you homework. Bend to the right slowly. Bring me, give me the chin, let me have it, let me have it. Good. Good. Now I need to lock him out a little bit more for this because of that C3, C4, C5 area. And we gotta go across. There you go. Gotcha. Okay. Come on up, sir. Walk it off one time, and then I'll rescope you. Make sure you're clear. He's smiling. That's a good thing. You didn't expect this visit, right? No. Okay. Hopefully you're happy. Keep walking, please. Take a breath in. Anything different in the breath yet? I don't think so. I don't know. Okay. Have a seat. Let's rescope. Sit up straight. Head down, please. Starting at the base. Upper cervical is clear. Seven is clear. Sacrum is clear. Okay, spine is all clear, dude. Now we can go ahead and work on the nose. Let's go over here back on your back.
Now, with the septum adjustment, what I normally tell, or I do tell all patients, you want to do a lot of steaming, okay, okay so that things can start to drain out. Okay, that's the most important thing. That and just be a kid and enjoy yourself. Get your walks in. Sure. You're doing weights? Uh, no, not really. And I we don't do want you, I don't want... Calisthenics. Perfect, I don't want you to do any weights. Okay. okay, just lots and lots of walking. I normally tell people, tell people 10,000 steps a day. Okay, wow. Somewhere around there. Sure. So no, break it up in your studies. Got it. Okay. SATs? Uh, yeah, probably mm -hmm. this year. Cool. Chin down. Chin down. Okay. Let's open this up a little bit more for him. Okay. Chin down a little bit more. Good. So it's right there. Chin down. Down. I'm going across this way. Chin down. There you go. Gotcha. Deep breath in and out. Can I get a little bit more? Yeah. Can, yeah. can I do a little bit yeah, more? Yeah. Okay. Chin down though. There. Down. There you go. Gotcha. All set. Wait for it. You survived. Yeah. Okay, walk it off. And let me see, here's some tissue. That's where we're gonna start, okay? You're not nervous anymore, right? Have a seat. Let me rescope the neck, make sure nothing came out in, in the process. Head down, please. All clear. Okay. So that's where we're going to start. Maybe one or two, maybe one or two more adjustments on the nose. Maybe. Uh, most important thing for me besides that is the foundation. All that other stuff is part of the compensation. Should feel a little different right now when you're sitting, mm. okay? And especially when you're walking. When we're done here, what I'd like you to do is go walk for at least 15, 20 minutes. Arms down. <laughs> okay. Now, tell me, what's different for you? Um, I actually think I can breathe better right on the right side. Uh, feels clear. My, Little different. Yeah, yeah. My shoulders, like in this area, it feels like more relaxed. Good. With, uh, a lot of tension. Okay. Um, I feel like pretty loose. So. Okay. Now you get a buff and polish, okay? Okay. This is vibration therapy. This is to just break up some scar tissue and bad habits. Posture habits. The more steaming you do, the better. You can do it every day. And what I normally recommend, what I normally recommend in the steaming is just boil a pot of water, okay? Cover yourself up with a towel or a sheet and just let it drain out as much as you can. Okay. And do it without a shirt, please. Okay. The good thing about I say kids being under 18, okay? The good thing about kids, they respond really fast. That's the good thing, so it shouldn't be a lot of adjusting, but a lot of walking. You're gonna ice the areas that I adjusted. There may be some soreness. Okay. Okay, there may be a little bit of soreness, um, and just walk, that's it. Okay. Stand up over here, please. Face me, squeeze. I'm checking your hands. Okay. Squeeze. Squeeze a little harder. Relax. Squeeze. We got a little bit on the elbow. I'm going to set the elbow. Let it go. There. Lunate. Scaphoid. Thumb. Squeeze. Good. Squeeze. Lunate scaphoid. A little more. There you go. Go like that five times. Squeeze, squeeze, face, face pops, ears. Now you're all set. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the office. Thank you so much. You got it. You have any questions? No. So 10,000 steps and then steaming? 
10,000 steps steaming, and that's it, and then posture, okay. okay? And when you're doing posture, I'll give you some more homework later. Right now, just get through the walking and everything. When you're sitting studying, mm. every hour, just get up and move around a little bit, okay? okay? I'll see you next week. Thank you.